Hey everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about the drug lithium, also known by the brands Carbolith, Escalith, and many others. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. Lithium can be classified as a mood stabilizing agent, or mood stabilizer. Mood stabilizers like lithium are often given for the treatment of bipolar disorder, but we'll get into that in a minute. The exact mechanism of action, the way lithium works, is still not completely understood. There are different theories as to how lithium works, but we really can't say for sure. We just know that it can and does work for some people. Just one of those theories is called the inositol depletion theory, and you can look up different theories online, we won't get into them here. Lithium is available orally in the form of various tablets or capsules and as a liquid syrup. And like we mentioned, it can be used in the maintenance of bipolar disorder and in the treatment of manic episodes of bipolar disorder. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, bipolar disorder is a mental disorder that causes unusual shifts in mood, energy, activity levels, concentration, and the ability to carry out day-to-day -day tasks. So again, lithium helps to manage bipolar disorder and can be used in the treatment of manic episodes. During a manic episode, symptoms can include very high levels of energy and activity, euphoria, increased irritability, lack of sleep, and more. Off-label, lithium can also be used for borderline personality disorder. Now let's move on to the side effects of lithium. When you take a drug, a certain concentration of that drug will end up in your bloodstream, and we can usually measure that concentration. Lithium is no exception. When you take lithium, we expect to see a blood lithium concentration of about 0.6 to 1.2 millimoles per liter. Keep in mind that this range may vary slightly depending on your references. What is important about lithium is that this range is very narrow when compared to most other drugs, so there's not a lot of room for error. If you take just a bit too much, you can enter toxic levels. And if you don't take quite enough, you don't get lithium's therapeutic effects. You need to be right in the middle, in the therapeutic range. You can see here an example of taking too high a dose of lithium, and here an example of taking too small a dose of lithium. And finally, the green stays within that therapeutic range with the proper dosing. So this narrow range is known as a narrow therapeutic index. And again, most drugs have more leeway than lithium, they have a broader therapeutic index. Just some of the many possible side effects include lethargy, weight gain, hypotension or low blood pressure, cardiac arrhythmias, seizures, and hypothyroidism. You can use the following blood levels for lithium as a rough guide to lithium side effects. Less than 1.5 may give you relatively few side effects, 1.5 to 2.5 you may see mild to moderate side effects, and 2 to 2.5 is more moderate to severe side effects. And again, note that these values may also be slightly different depending on your reference. So due to this narrow therapeutic index, blood levels of lithium need to be checked regularly. This helps to ensure that the client remains in the therapeutic range. Lithium blood levels might be checked twice a week to begin with, and gradually reduced to once every two or three months when stable. Instruct clients not to double dose if a dose is missed, due to an increased risk for lithium toxicity. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of lithium. This includes checking vital signs like blood pressure to monitor for hypo or hypertension. Instruct clients to maintain a consistent level of sodium intake in their diet. Sudden increases in sodium intake can result in a decrease in blood lithium levels. And sudden decreases in sodium intake can result in an increase in blood lithium levels, increasing the risk for lithium toxicity. So remember, higher sodium levels means lower lithium levels and lower sodium levels means higher lithium levels. The same principle that applies to sodium also applies to caffeine. More caffeine can decrease lithium levels, and less caffeine can increase lithium levels. So instruct clients to also maintain consistent caffeine intake. And lastly, dehydration may also lead to increased lithium levels, again resulting in lithium toxicity. So maintaining adequate hydration is also very important. So when you're studying for your exams, keep those three in mind. Sodium, caffeine, and hydration. And think about how they affect the levels of lithium. And that's about it for the basics of lithium. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.